This is documentary filmmaker John Ziegler. I'm here at Western CPAC in Newport Beach, California. And one of the reasons I'm here is I want to speak to David Keene, who is the head of the American Conservative Union, which runs CPAC in Washington, D.C. Now, as a little bit of backdrop, I've actually been a speaker at the last three CPACs in D.C. And uh, last year, I was a co-sponsor of the event because of my film, Media Malpractice, How Obama Got Elected and Palin Was Targeted. And in the course of that co-sponsorship, I became very suspicious about the way things are done at ACU and specifically at CPAC. And those suspicions were heightened this summer when after Sarah Palin resigned as governor of Alaska, David Keene made some very derogatory and I believe inappropriate and inaccurate statements about Sarah Palin, which sounded more like Keith Oberman, frankly, than the head of the American Conservative Union. About this same time, there was a story uh, by Politico that indicated that the ACU, ACU, American Conservative Union, was essentially selling David Keene's opinion via op-ed pieces on a piece of legislation that Federal Express was interested in uh, to the tune of two to three million dollars. Well, when Federal Express was no longer uh, interested in paying that kind of money, it appeared as if ACU switched their position on the issue. Uh, these were just some of the things I wanted to ask David Keene about. He agreed to do an interview, so let's go find out what he had to say. David, thank you for agreeing to uh, speak with us today. I, I'm curious about some of the statements that, that you have made uh, recently, especially about Sarah Palin. Uh, you told Newsmax that uh, Sarah Palin had been uh, whining about press coverage, was not ready for the major leagues, had bailed on her governorship, was bitter, was resentful. I'm curious as to why you said those things and why someone who is a conservative wouldn't be upset with those comments that sound more like they should come from Keith Oberman than the American Conservative Union. No, as I said also, I've, I've got a great deal of respect and admiration for Sarah Palin. What I said was that she, the question was, would she have a great deal of influence? I think she's going to continue to have a great deal of influence, but if her interest is running for president, she did two things that were wrong. First. Uh, she and her staff came away from the last cycle uh, convinced that they had been used and exploited by the McCain people. They had been. But bitter about it, not realizing that she got more out of it than he did. She became a national figure. Instead of moving on, she and more her staff than her began to whine about the treatment, whine about all this. What you do is you keep your goal in mind, and she didn't do that. So she still had time to do it. But then when you look at her, uh, her decision to resign, uh, the unresolved question, not among us who like her, but among the general public, is can she handle responsibility and leadership in the job? Uh, and you have to demonstrate that. If you've, you can't demonstrate that with a speech. The question was, is that the way that you would have advised her to go and proceed if she wanted to be president? The answer is no. Because let's take a look at some of the specific things you said. You said she's whined about press coverage. The ACU has tried to fundraise off of press coverage of the 2008 election, sent out fundraising emails complaining, or you using your word, whining about press coverage. And you wrote a column during the 2008 election saying that the coverage of her in comparison to Biden was unfair. Give me an, exa give me an example of her whining. That's the, uh, I don't have her quotes right now, but following the election and, and actually for six months after the election, she and her staff were continuing to talk about the press coverage. It's proper for you or for me to analyze and attack the way the press treats liberals. If you're a candidate, the public doesn't want you out there doing that. I mean, there are different roles. There's the role of a candidate. There's the role of a manager, the role of a consultant, and the role of an analyst and an observer. You're not allowed to correct the historical record about what happened in a president. But that's not what you, if you don't want that to be what you're all about. You don't let it get to you. And what happened was she let it get to her, just as he did. And I don't I, I can understand that, but you just have to be able. Her family was gone after, David. She was destroyed. Wait a minute, there, there's never been anybody, if you could name somebody else, I'd be glad to hear it, who has received the kind of press coverage that she got. And I would still like you to give me one example of, quote, whining from Sarah Palin about press coverage. Give me an example. Come here with all of my, you know. Just give me one. You said that. I mean, you're the head of the American Conservative Union. That's a very strong statement, David. It's a strong statement, and anybody who watched the news during that period, she was on television, she was in inter interviews, she was complaining about the press coverage. She Can you give me one example of whining? That, uh, she whined constantly. Now, whining would be, would it not, saying that something is either 
not appropriate without factual basis. In other words, is it whining to correct the historical record about what actually transpired? She focused on that for far too long. She can't tell the truth about she what really... She can tell the truth, and you know it, and you know that what you're saying is inaccurate. How, what's inaccurate about what because I'm saying? Because you're saying is that, is that improper for her to just, just talk about that? That's all she did. Hold on a second. She did an interview with me uh, back in January for a, a documentary called Media Malpractice, which got a lot of news coverage. She has, to my knowledge, never given another interview that was remotely on that topic. She complained about that. She complained about what? B about the, uh, the piece. No, she, see, you have no idea what you're talking about. She complained about the press coverage of the snippets that were released. Okay, so that's the way you see it. Well, no, I know the facts, because I know, I mean, it was my life, David. I know it. And I've dedicated my life to trying to correct the story. I guess, do you think that the way that she, if, if, what's her goal? What is her goal? Her goal in doing that interview was to correct the historical record. Okay. I and mean, she's been lied about, and you ought to support the fact that she's been lied about. I support that, but the, of course I support that. That's not the question. Sarah Palin, in resigning from the governorship, in proceeding. You said bailing out of the governorship. I said resigning. No, no. You want the quote from Newsmag? You said bailing out. You, she bailed out. She was elected to public office, and she didn't fulfill her obligation to the people of Alaska. I mean, I happen to be one who feels that if you're elected and you promise to do something, you ought to do it. And she didn't do that. Now, are you saying that was a wise move on her part? If she wanted to be president, probably not. But I don't know. I'm not sure. But I don't think. But David, I, I, it sounds to me like you don't know the details behind why she resigned and why she was forced to resign and not bail. As I analyze something. I say it the way I think it is. And I don't uh, unless you're being paid by somebody to say it different. Who paid me to do that? I don't know. I'm wondering. Yeah. I mean, were you, you, were, you were offered any money to pay to, to say that? Stupid, unfair, really? and terrible allegation. Well, now, you're talking about who, who, paid, who would pay me to attack Sarah Palin? Well, well, you guys offered your opinion to FedEx for 2 or $3 million until they, they, until they withdrew the offer. That, you, know, you think that's true? Tell me how it's not true. We there's a letter. Through, we went through all that. Oh, there's a letter. And there's if, a letter you offering your opinion you for two to three million dollars. You know, you, you, that's just not true. We've never accepted a, a penny. Because they, them. Them. they withdrew the offer. We supported their position. And then you withdrew your position. No, already. we did not disrupt, change our position at all. And you know it. Really? Yeah. So, so the letter that was written by Dennis Woodfield is inaccurate, offering your opinion for two to three million dollars for Fed. Our support for that. We were already supporting them. They asked us to submit a proposal for financial support, and we did. After that proposal, our, we, we support them today in terms of the position. What I criticized about them was a legitimate point. They, like everybody else, what they have is a very important labor fight with this other cor corporation, with UPS. UPS is trying to use the government to change the rules to benefit them competitively. It's a labor fight over the National Labor Relations Act. Right. So how do you, it still doesn't explain the letter, and it still doesn't explain why anyone should give you the benefit of the doubt when in the past you sold out because of your lobbying firm, uh, your lobbying firm to endorse Arlen Specter over Pat Toomey, who you gave $2,000 to last year, who's now a Democrat. You've treated Arlen Specter better in the last year than you have Sarah Palin. How should conservatives react to that? Well, Arlen Specter, as I said at the time, was a close friend of mine had been for 30 years. And you had a lot of business in front of his committee. Uh, well, I had very little business in front of his committee. Oh, really? So yeah. those reports are inaccurate? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. So, what, so, then, why, so then why would you, why would you give $2,000 to Arlen Specter last year, uh, who, a guy who has now proven I himself gave, to be I complete? Gave him no money when he was running against Pat Toomey. <laughs> so, so now in 2008, it's okay to give, you endorsed him in 2004. If you read my column, what I did was I said, I'm sitting this one out. So what did the ACU do? With her five thousand dollars to Pat Toomey. Right. So what, where was the endorsement for Pat Toomey in two thousand and four? The ACU PAC endorsed Pat Toomey and contributed five thousand dollars. So so what was the National Review article about in two thousand? They attacked me because I said I wouldn't go out and campaign and work for Pat Toomey. Right. And why wouldn't you do that? Because Arlen Specter had been a friend of mine for a long time. So you and I didn't want to get into it. So so your influence is either for sale, either be by friendship or by That's by by lobbying. You know are yours for sale? Not that I'm aware of, Probably no. Is. Really? Yeah. And what are you basing that allegation? Anything you base yours on. 
Oh, really? National Review articles and political articles and a history of this kind of behavior? You know, I'll put my record up against yours or anyone else's. You have no idea about my record. You have no, you know nothing. I have one. That's the point. Really? Yeah. See, so, do you know anything about me, why don't David? You just go talk to somebody that agrees with you all the time. Okay. I'm, I'm, I want to find out why Fine. somebody like yourself would be ahead of the conservative American Conservative Union and run CPAC when, when clearly it's a you're doing this in a corrupt way, David.